second edition of Rambling Rides with Amber, and thank you guys for joining me. I actually have a lot of fun doing these. It's kind of been a, a neat little uh, web series. I don't know if you can call it that, but I'm just driving home from work. We had another beautiful day. I'm going to do up the windows so that you can hear me a little better. Uh, but it's it's window down weather, which is kind of nice for September And I got to be on a horse the last two days almost all day long So that's fun for me I'm fortunate to have beautiful weather beautiful locations I'm not sure that we're gonna get to see the the changing and the color of the leaves for this season Which is something that we got to see last year, which was so beautiful. There was a, an episode with Lily Ty's mom and we had a ride through some incredible changing colors of leaves in the forest and there was some really breathtaking shots so I don't know that we're gonna see that this year everything is still very green it's still pretty hot for September we got up to the mid 20s today and of course I was already established wearing uh, a jacket and a scarf and <laughs> it's just the way it is I guess um, which was okay I mean we the weather in Alberta, they say if you don't like it, wait five minutes because it changes so rapidly and it comes out of nowhere. And so the morning, it was quite cold. It was about three, four degrees Celsius, which is very chilly. So I was layered all up. I had long johns on this morning. And then by about 10, 11 o'clock, it was up in the high teens already. So I had to shed a few layers, but I have to keep on the external clothes so that they match because this is all supposed to be taking place. Everything that we filmed in the last two days and what we're filming tomorrow is supposed to take place over um, you know a shorter period of time so we have to we have to look the same. So that's another little behind the scenes thing is that when we choose our wardrobe we have to make sure that if it's gonna get cold we can fit long johns under it or if it's gonna get hot we're not gonna be sweltering and it's just something you have to kind of live with as an actor. Okay, I'm back with you. I had to pull over and adjust my camera setup here because it was so hot today that it actually melted the, the suction that the camera was stuck on with. So uh, we're all good now. And that brings me to the A. Marshall weather report for the day because I know many of you have been missing my weather reports. So I, I mentioned earlier that it was about 24 degrees and sunny and as you can see that sun is just setting to the west of me and we are wrapped before dark which is really nice. Uh, we finished at about 7 o'clock and right now the sun is going down just shortly after 8, closer to 9. Um, as the days get shorter, closer to fall and winter, um, we have less daylight and so we have to fit more into our day. Whereas in the summertime, when it was not dark until 10.30, close to 11, we had a lot more time to get everything in the day done before the sun went down. So that's one thing that kind of changes with our schedule as the year goes on. Uh, Rain, you can see her. <laughs> right behind me there. She's been handling set really well. I haven't really brought her on to set much because it is a bit of a distraction and she's still, she's not quite ready yet. She's not like Remy who I can just lay down in a corner and I know she'll stay there until I'm ready to, to take her back up top to the trailers. Rain is a little bit more flighty. She's a little bit unsure, nervous. She whines a bit when she can't see me. So we're slowly working on it and over time she will get better. Um, my previous border collie, China, for those of you who don't know anything about her, um, I got her, she was a stray dog. I got her when she was two years old. She was very, very fearful of people and I brought her to set every day and that's how she came out of her shell. That's how she turned around and got used to people. And Rain isn't afraid of people, but she's very afraid of new situations. So similar way I'm handling it, I'm just exposing her to as much as I can and just with positive reinforcement and telling her it's okay, like we're just going to do these things. And one thing that um, I do with my dogs is if they're worried about something, I never overemphasize it. So a lot of people, um, well just people that I been around you know a dog's afraid of something and they'll be oh, it's okay it's not gonna hurt you it's okay and that kind of 
drives me nuts to be honest um, so I just I go through these situations and I act calmly and I don't really pay much attention to the things that the dogs are afraid of I just walk calmly and do what I would do regularly and the more times they see that I'm okay with it and that it's not gonna hurt them whatever that might be it might be a person it might be a dog it might be a situation then they they start to learn oh well you know you're, you're fine with it so I should be fine with it too and that's just the way that I, I handle that and everybody's different every uh, every situation is different every dog is different so there's no one specific rule for this but this is something that I've had a few questions about over the last little while and also things like crate training and my beliefs and all that kind of thing I briefly mentioned on Instagram that I believe that uh, crates are a really good idea when they're used properly I do crate train all my dogs um, but I use them more as um, kind of a safe place as opposed to I would never use a crate for bad behavior I would never send a dog to a crate as a as a punishment they know that that's their their safe spot and I have a crate in my trailer at work and rain loves it she goes right in there and she feels safe and whenever she's in there you know I'll give her a treat or I'll say good girl and she knows that that's her safe spot which is nice because if I do have to travel let's say I have to go on an airplane and she has to go in a crate then she already feels safe and comfortable in there and she knows that okay I'm in my crate nothing's gonna hurt me I'm okay and it's also a good tool if you're going to somebody's house or you have to go to somewhere where you can't really keep an eye on the dog or the dog can't be right there with you then you know you can put them in their crate for a short amount of time they're gonna be happy and content there that's their space and so that's just how I feel about it and all my dogs have always really loved their crates and I don't lock them up in them anymore I do when they're young and when they're just learning things um, but Remy, my 11-year-old Shepherd, we still have a crate in the house for her and the door is always open and she sleeps in there quite often. So it's just, it's up to you and your situation, but that's kind of how it's worked for me and my dogs. And, and Rain's doing really well. She's still very timid of a lot of things and I take things slowly and I try not to put a lot of pressure on her. But just coming to set every day and coming in the hair and makeup trailer, for example, because the first week, two weeks, I had her on set, she was terrified to come in the hair and makeup trailer and she would shake, her whole body would just tremble the whole time. But I didn't pay attention to it because there was nothing that was harming her, it wasn't you know, a super high um, pressure situation. So a lot of people would look at her and go, oh, she's so scared, look at, she's shaking. And I said, just don't pay attention to her. Like she doesn't need that satisfaction that we're rewarding her for being so scared. So everybody just ignored her for two weeks. And I said, if she's sitting there shaking, just don't touch her. Just let her be and let her realize that this is okay. And so after a couple weeks, and it did take probably two and a half weeks or so, she started to come in and then she'd figure out where she could lay safely, that she was out of the way. And when she was laying contently, I would say, okay, if you wanna go pet her, go pet her now. And it's just that positive reinforcement when they're doing something that is good and I say good but that could be anything from just not being traumatized by the situation just accepting it and lying down patiently and that's when you go in and reward them by and this is just all this is just me speaking of my own experience so please don't take anything I'm saying as dog training advice but this is just what's worked for me and my dogs and I'm all about rewarding the behavior you want and not rewarding or ignoring the behavior you don't so if in my case I want a dog to be able to be with me to lay quietly at my side and just be obedient so when she's lying down and she's being a good relaxed dog that's when I go up to her and I pet her and I tell her she's a good girl and all of those things if she's pacing and whining and shaking or any of those things I just don't pay attention to her. I don't tell her that she's bad or anything, but I just I just completely ignore her. And then she learns over time that, okay, if she's gonna be shaking and, and stressed out about something, I'm not gonna pay her any attention. So that doesn't work. So if all of a sudden she just lays there and looks at me and says, I'm, I'm happy, I'm content, that's when she's gonna get my attention, that's when she's gonna get cuddles and pats. So that's the way I've kind of always just worked it. But there, there's a little uh, dog training 101, my rambling rides rant, I guess. 
Um, and again, everybody's different. Every dog is different. Every situation is different. So you have to do what works for you in your situation with your dog. And the best thing you can do is just be aware. Observe them. Don't just think you know what's best for them. Watch and learn. And you know, the more we open our mind and the more we watch and understand, the more we will be in tune with our animals and, and have a better relationship. So I'm a bit of a tough love mama, you know? I'm, I'm not someone who lets my dog sleep in bed with me or is super mushy with them, but I love my dogs and I give them lots of attention at the right times. And I think that's, that's really the key to all of it, in my own opinion. So with that, I'm going to end this edition of Rambling Rides with Amber. And I've really enjoyed this so far, so thank you guys for um, requesting that it continues. And that's just uh, my, my opinions for the day and what's going on. And stay tuned for the next adventure in Rambling Rides with Amber. Take care.